Hello and thank you very much for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester two, routing and switching essentials, and this is chapter seven, routing dynamically, part 7.5, the routing table. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to determine the root source, administrative distance, and metric for a given root, explain the concepts of parent-child relationship in dynamically building built routing table, compare the IPv4 classless routing lookup process and the IPv6 lookup process, analyze the routing table to determine which route will be used to forward a packet. So for example, if we do show IP route uh, and we see a routing table, we see some with the C, the codes and L. For example, the C is directly connected network, right? So this is the root source where we are learning from. So, for example, the network uh, 172.16.1.0, this command has been run on router 1. We see the directly connected network is 172.16.1.0 forward slash 24 and is directly connected on the gigabit Ethernet 00, which is, I should say 01 actually here, this one here. Now, in that network, we have uh, some a local interface IP address 172.16.1.1. So, the source where we learn in our these networks. Common codes for remote networks include S, which is for static route, so if you created a static route, D for EIGIP, routing protocol, E was already taken, that's why they use D for the uh, algorithm, which is dual, O for OSPF routing protocol, and R for RIP routing protocol. Here is the network in question, for example, the destination network, 172.16.1.0, this is the destination. And for R1, for example, this is directly connected. And then we see the exit interface or outgoing interface. If we see another route that we have learned it from the dynamic routing protocol, for example, RIP on this instance. So the first is the code, where we get in the information from. So root source R stands for RIP. The network in question, the network 172.16.4.0 forward slash 28, which is this one here. So if I mark it, this one here, this network. So uh, that uh, the next thing, the destination network, we can see that is a subnet because it's RIP version two, so we can see the subnet as well. And the administrative distance is 120. So this is your AD of 120. And hops, we have two hops away. That's a metric on RIP, two hops. From R1 to R2 is one hop, from R2 to R3 is two hops. Now in IPv6, for example, or router uh, RIP, NG, or next generation, that will be three hops because the routers that count themselves as one hop. Via the neighbor's IP address, so 229.165.200.226 is the IP address of router 2. The how long we have learned at this, so root timestamp, and then we see the outgoing interface, which is our S000 to get to that route, or to that network, I should say. So routing table terms, routers are discussed in terms of ultimate route, level one route, level one parent route, and level two child routes. An ultimate route is a route in a routing table, is a routing table entry that contains either a next hop IP address or exit interface. This can be directly connected, dynamic, static, and link local routes are all ultimate routes. So you have to remember an ultimate route it's always going to have a next hop IP address or an exit interface, or you can have both, but without the exit interface is never an ultimate route. So when we do show IP route, for example, and we begin from the gateway, we can see that our static route, there's a default static route, for example, has got an exit interface, so S0001, plus the next hop IP address as well. So this is our ultimate route. All these are ultimate routes as well, as you can see. These ones, they don't have the next hop IP address, but they do have an exit interface, G00, and this one here as well. And the next three, they do have an exit, next hop IP address and the exit interface. The next one, it's again, ultimate route, and these down here are ultimate route. So quite a few ultimate routes, apart from this one here, it's not an ultimate route, and this route here is not an ultimate route. We'll see what, are they, what they are very soon. 
In IPv6, all of the routes are ultimate routes. So level one route, a level one route is a route with the subnet mask equal to or less than the classful mask of the network address. So for example, this address is equal to the class full, so 24. That's called a level one route. So network address is class C. Subnet mask is equal to class C mask. And this is a level one route. So this, this route is level one route and ultimate route. So they can be a level one and ultimate route. Level one route can function as the following default route. A default route is a static route that ha uh, with the address all zeros. Super netted route, route with a network address with a mask less than the class full mask. Network route, route is a route that has a subnet mask equal to that of a class full mask. So for example, this is a level one route. So it's class full, equal to class full mask, forward slash 24, because it's class C. But it's less than the class they belong so forward slash 16 that's a level one route all of these are ultimate routes so level one and ultimate route level one parent route a level one parent route is level one route that's been subnetted a level one parent route is automatically created anytime a subnet is added to the routing table a parent route can never be an ultimate route each entry displays the classful network address and the network of the subnets the number of subnets and the number of different subnet masks the classful address has been subdivided into. So for example, this one here, so 172.16.0.0 uh, 0, 0, forward slash 16 is the parent root of all these roots. These are the child roots. So we can see that they are variably, being variably subnetted and we have as five subnet ma subnets with three different masks. It's like 32, 24, 28 and so on. Okay. So why is this so important? As a, for example, imagine the router has, I don't know, 100,000 of these, yeah? As it goes through, like it gets, gets a packet with the destination, whatever. Now the router will start reading these parent routes, trying to match it with the parent route first. If it doesn't match with this parent route, there's no point of reading all, reading all this information because none of, it will not match with any of these because all of these are under this parent route. So it will jump from this parent route to the next parent route. So that's why for to speed the process of root lookup. Level two child roots. A level two child root is a root that's been subnetted of classful network address. Like a level one root, the source of the level two root can be a directly connected network, a static root, or dynamically learned root. Level two child roots are also ultimate roots. So for example, all these are level two child roots because all of them, they have less than a class full address. So that's a le level two. Level one was equal to class full or less than a class full. Level two root is class full and more. So level two child roots also are also ultimate roots. This is the routine lookup process. If the best match is a level one ultimate route, then this route is used to forward the packet. If the best match is a level one parent route, proceed to the next step. The router examines the child roots, the subnet roots, or the parent route for a best match. If there's a match with the level two child roots, the subnet is used to forward the packet. If there's no match with the, any of the level two child roots, proceed to the next step. Step number six, the router continues searching level one supernet roots in the routing table for a match, including the default route. If there is one, if there is a new now a lesser match with a le level one supernet or default route, the router uses the route to forward the packet. Step eight, if there is no match within any route in the routing table, the router drops the packet. So always the router, as it's trying to match destination, for example, this is our destination, is going through the network and it's trying to match it with the longest match. So as you can see, all of these, route one, route two, and route three, all of these routes, there's a match, yeah? So all of them, there could be a match. But the only the last one has the longest match. And if there's a longest match, then we use that. Longest in bits, yeah? So longest match, then we use that one. IPv6 routing table entries, components of the IPv6 routing table are very similar to the IPv4 routing table. 
directly connected interfaces, static routes, and dynamically learned routes. IPv6 is classless by design. All routes are effectively, effectively level 1 ultimate routes. There is no level 1 parent of level 2 child routes. Thank you very much for watching this section 7.5, the routing table. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici and goodbye.